So yeah, that was a middle-aged dad dabbing because he's excited for the new Apple TV. Yes, we had an Apple non-event today. Just press releases, just an update to the store, no conference, no Tim Cook, none of that. There were rumors. I had hope. I had high hopes. And we got something. We got a new Apple TV 2022 model, a mere 18-ish months since the last update to the device. So what did we get? We actually got two. They look like the same form factor. They dropped the prices and they powered them up quite a good bit. So two models, Model A, 129 bucks. The main defining elements of that model basically being there is no wired ethernet port, Wi-Fi only, and it has 64 gigabytes of memory. No more 32 gigabytes of memory in an Apple TV 4K. The more expensive model, the premium one, not a pro, but the more premium of the two, $149, pay 20 bucks more, what do you get? You get an ethernet port and you get double the storage space, 128 gigabytes. Shared between them, of course, is an upgrade to the A15 chip. The rumors and some of the, the other pre-information suggested that we might see an A14 upgrade, which would have been a two-generation upgrade from the current model or prior models A12. But no, we got an A15, three generations newer in the processor. No mention of memory, but Apple usually doesn't disclose the amount of RAM in a lot of their devices like that, the non-MacBook, non-computers. So the rumor was there was going to be more RAM three to four gigabytes. I would suspect that there probably is more RAM in there to go with the other upgrades. I guess I'll have to wait or look for a confirmation on that or for them to actually come out and get some kind of a teardown. Another interesting change, we got the same remote mostly. Now the remote though has a USB-C port on it for charging it, no more lightning. How in God's green earth does Apple put a USB-C port on the Apple TV's remote and they don't put a USB-C port on an iPhone 14, at least an iPhone 14 Pro. Right, USB-C everywhere, please, Apple. But regardless of that, for this device, for this Apple TV, that's awesome. I would, I would very much like to abolish lightning in anything that I have in my household that requires a lightning port and get everything moved to, Apple, or everything moved to USB-C. And now, at least another element, charging an Apple TV remote can be done with USB-C. Pretty cool. So what didn't we get? We didn't get a we didn't get a stick. And honestly, these two devices are like so close in price, twenty dollar difference that I don't see a whole lot of delineation. So I mean, if you're getting one, I, I guess pick what you want. Pretty clear. Uh, if you need, if you want the wired Ethernet port, which if you're really streaming for critical viewing in a premium environment, you should be buying the wired one and wiring it, not using Wi-Fi. But not everybody can do that. So whatever there. And if you're not gaming on it, of course, you don't really need the 128 gigabyte. 64 would probably set you up just fine for uh, regular apps, streaming, music, playback, and all of that. So I'm buying the big boy, of course. I'll be buying, I already ordered actually, two of the $150, 128 gigabyte models. One for the theater, one for the living room. And of course, I'll be opening those things up putting them in and, and going over as much as I can ASAP once they're installed with new content and new videos about them. Um, and they're due to ship or arrive on November 4th. Pretty cool. So I know a bunch of folks in, in uh, some of the posts that I made on the channel and, and in the prior video where I was discussing kind of the rumors and speculation and what I wanted to see in a new Apple TV, always, always, always the request for bitstream output there was no specific announcement related to that. Honestly, I don't know all the implementation details, speaking like, I guess, as an engineer and knowing what I know about audio video stuff. I don't think that true support for bit streaming is something that really has to happen in a hardware revision. I think that that's something that's really more of a software deal. So if we were gonna see news about supporting lossless audio, bit stream output and all that, I think that would come more at in June at a WWDC and where they would prominently talk about that as a feature and a new element of tvOS and offerings in iTunes and new elements of the SDKs and everything. Because fundamentally, the, the box does support lossless audio output, de decoded output, as it is because Infuse will decode Atmos, TrueHD, DTS Master Audio and DTSX into up to a core 
lossless PCM surround output. So Infuse has software decoders and for Apple to do it provided it would be a software development kit tvOS level thing. That said, when I get it, rest assured, I'll be I'll be checking out what it can do if there's any new surprises and all of that. And if any of that stuff actually is actionable because of the new hardware, I got pretty good confidence, you know, apps like Plex, app, apps like Infuse will jump on that stuff with brand new features right away. So who is this for and, you know, should you buy it if you just, if you have the most recent one or the last, now the last generation model from 2021, should you buy it? I think a lot of the improvements and benefit for this will, will come from a gaming perspective. I really like Apple Arcade and I like the kind of games and, and how they play and, and, and accessibility and all of that on Apple TV. So I'm super, super excited for a three generation bump in the CPU. There's gonna be faster processing, faster graphics, more memory and double the storage. I've been running up against the storage limits at 64 gigabytes of my Apple TV for a while, commenting how like Infuse will dump its metadata because there's not enough storage space on the device to keep that, plus all the apps and all the games that I had been loading on it. At least we're getting 128. That's the minimum hope that I would have had for it. I would have loved to see 256. So that'll be a lot more headroom for games and all the games should run better. A lot of, a good portion I would say of Apple TV games, they do stutter a little bit. They do hitch uh, my, my Kids really like Sneaky Sasquatch, and I'll play that a bunch with them, helping them unlock stuff. They still need Gamer Dad to come in and do some of the harder harder parts of the game. And, and you can definitely see some frame rate hitches and some other things in, in games uh, of that level on Apple TV from Apple Arcade. So I'm super, super excited to pop an A15 in there, and, and those games should just run like butter. They should run fluid. But even still, there's going to be a lot of naysayers, and there already were in the comments to my last video in that, which is like, oh, you know, you don't need a device like this upgraded every year or every every two years, and I've got the last one, and it'll be fine for a good long while. To that, I would say, you know, sure, you don't always have to buy the latest and greatest, right? Just because a company releases something, even if they released it every year, you don't have to buy it. Car companies release cars every single year. Do, do you feel the need to go trade in your automobile and, and get the latest, greatest, newest model? Well, no, of course not, because that's ridiculous relative to what they cost. But when we're talking about something that's like $130 now, if there's a new one every year, even if it's just spec bumps and things like that, I mean, I'm buying it. But if you don't want to spend the money and you think the $100 is a waste, then don't buy it. Buy every other one or buy every third, right? Whatever really makes sense for you, do what makes sense for you. But But don't don't shoot down the idea that there's other folks that would want to upgrade every year or that different people might end up in different cadences. So, you know, every other year for one person might be the other every other year for another person. So I'm super happy to see these things upgraded more often than not. To me, I'm happy to buy them. It's not a money grab to me. And, and if, if I don't feel I'm getting something out of the device for the money that it costs, then I don't upgrade it. I'm probably not buying an iPhone 14 this year. I'm, I'm pretty happy with my 13, and I'm, I think I'm content to stick out, stick it out until the 15 comes. I've got an M1 12.9-inch iPad Pro, and the M2 12.9-inch iPad Pros just got announced today. Am I feeling, like, distraught about that? I only bought my iPad this calendar year as well, just about maybe several months or so ago. You know, so be it. The new one's out. And if I think I really need it or I could benefit from it or I just really want it, I'll buy it. If not, I'll happily keep using my super powerful M1 iPad Pro and it will last me maybe until the M3 or maybe even the M4. I'm happy to see this device. The Apple TV to me is, is the center point, the crux point of all of our audio and video entertainment. Yes, we use the Kaleidoscape quite often in the theater and yes, I still have the gaming PC, but those are kind of the super expensive niche the Apple TV is the is the everyday, everything else, the, the majority use case. And so, again, I'm, I'm happy to buy it. And the other thing about devices like this and, and having them come out more frequently and getting these spec bumps, more CPU, more GPU, more RAM, more memory, isn't even always necessarily about like, well, you know, the, the apps that we have or the stuff that it needs to do, the current device is powerful enough. Well, maybe, but... When you have more powerful hardware coming out, you give 
developers, you give service providers the ability to make more powerful apps. They can put more features in their apps. They have bigger footprints so that they can make their apps, you know, the compiled size of an app can be larger, containing more useful, interesting, beneficial features and capabilities and all that stuff. They can code more logic and more, just more capability into an app when you are able to target faster devices with more CPU and GPU power. You can use up more memory, right, per app when you have more of it available to do more things. So hardware needs to march forward so that software can continually march forward. And it's a bummer when hardware gets stuck for so long that it really starts to limit the progress of the software that would run on it. So even if you don't buy a new Apple TV, you know, every cycle, you know, or, or every year, or every 18 months, whatever it might be, you know, know that, that, that those interim releases had to come along so that developers could start to target more powerful stuff so that when you do upgrade, there, there's more powerful apps and software to be able to run. This is why to me, like I can't stand council cycles anymore, video game council cycles. The fact that it takes like five years, seven years or whatever, you know, to, to have a, a new PlayStation or a new Xbox come out. You know, screw that. I want a new GPU in my PC every two-ish years or so, 18 months, as fast as NVIDIA and, and AMD spin them out. I accept the fact that I'm an early upgrader and there's a certain cost and everything that comes with that to kind of run the latest and greatest. But you pick your you pick the things that you spend your technology money on and you pick the things that give you the biggest benefit and the biggest return. And so I'm totally happy here with what Apple did with this device today because I'm very, very excited about a three CPU generational bump and all of the extra power that can now be harnessed in this device by developers coming up, going in, to the next WWDC in June. Hopefully, maybe then, we will actually see tvOS on the presentation stage with really advanced, uh, more, more advanced features, more advanced capabilities coming to the devices, coming to its apps that the developers and the service providers will be able to take care of. So, sound off in the comments. Let me know what you think. Are you bummed out by it? You know, was there anything else that you would have liked to see out of this Apple TV 4K upgrade? Were you hoping for a cheaper stick, you know, or were you hoping for the M1 box too, a $500 M1 or M2 based Apple TV? That would have been pretty sweet. I think Apple has so much potential to just capture the living room across the entire spectrum if they really decide to go after it, invest in this part of the company, and invest in this product line. We'll see what happens going forward. I will be back <laughs> November 4th with a whole bunch of hands-on videos and, and updates and comments and feedback on the new Apple TV. Pretty sweet. I can't wait. And just so you know, I know the Shield is an awesome device too. You don't have to tell me in the comments. I didn't talk about the NVIDIA Shield here. This isn't about comparing the Shield and the Apple TV, although I might go ahead and make some of that kind of content coming up as well. They're both great. You don't have to validate your ownership or purchase of the NVIDIA Shield TV. So thanks so much for watching. Please do all the regular YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, leave some comments, even just the thanks or the thumbs up, ask some questions, share your Apple TV thoughts. If you'd like to support the channel more directly, it's all down there. Super thanks, channel memberships, merch, affiliate links, and more. Thanks so much for watching. Coming back for more home theater discussion and fun.